Hello and welcome to the Rocky Mountain Rally Round 2 of the Canadian Rally Championship. I'm Jen Horsey. And I'm Andrew Comrie Picard and we're looking at an interesting rally. Yeah, I understand up in the hills it's a little bit different. We're in the, the foothills right now in these beautiful meadows, but what's it like up there near the mountain? I've heard sleet and rain and snow up in the mountaintops. It could be very difficult. That makes for a muddy surface, a bit of a slick surface on this Friday. That could take people out. I'm worried that some cars might not make it to Saturday. We've got some pretty interesting competition though. We've got uh, Antoine Lestat is certainly in the hunt for another win. Uh, Sylvain Erickson. Driving for a win with his daughter in the co-driver's seat. And uh, Matthew Iorio, we've got up here from the States this weekend in a rented Pat Richard car. In a, not his normal car, but car, a car that he's probably going to be able to get used to. It's similar to his normal car. But I think you're right. Those three competitors, all potential competitors for the lead. And I think it's going to be a good battle. Especially I'm watching Sylvain Erickson and Antoine Lestat. Yeah, and we've got some great local guys here too. Gord Olson is here this weekend. And he always puts on a pretty good show. Front wheel drive, ride. Volkswagen Golf, fantastic driver, fantastic car. And, and just a great spirited drive. Right, so well, with this little spot of clear, we'll see how long this lasts and probably get into the rain and get into the rally. Let's head out to the stages. Paris-Neige in Manawaki, Quebec, Antoine Lestage took the win with a time of 2 hours, 28 minutes and 25 seconds. Sylvain Erickson was only 45 seconds adrift in second place. And in third place in the P2 Suzuki Swift with the Sprongo brothers. John Nichols in his Volkswagen Golf GTI came in fourth. And rounding out the top five was Philippe Dubay. Despite chronic flats for Antoine Lestage, he still gained enough on Erickson to take the win by 45 seconds. A lot of things happen, but uh, at the end, we are winning the rally and very happy. Sylvain Erickson dominated his home event, but clutch problems late in the day cost him the win. It's terrible right now, terrible. I think I got, but because uh, Antoine has a flat problem, but we hope so, we're just going to go to the service. Frank Sprongel and John Nichols were in a battle for third, but in the end, Sprongel held off Nichols in his tiny Suzuki Swift for a stunning third place finish. Trusted the notes, trusted my brother 100%, and we just drove the wheels off the car. That's how we did it. It was a disappointing Paris Nash for defending champion Peter Thompson. He went off early in the rally, dashing any chance of taking the rally and getting a slow start to his championship. But he's back here at Rocky Mountain, so watch out for him. And you know, we were really hoping for big things from you, ACP, but you tore off the front wheel on stage five, and that knocked you out of the race. Yeah, you know, it was tough, but that's the way it goes. That's rallying. The Rocky Mountain Rally is 33 years old and takes place the last weekend of May in the hills outside of Calgary, Alberta. It's a two-day rally, 14 stages covering 186 kilometers. On Friday, we'll run six stages, 65 kilometers through the breathtaking Kananaskis country west of town. Saturday is much longer. We'll run the last eight stages covering 121 kilometers in the Porcupine Hills south of Calgary. Hey Andrew, your family's from around here. This is your home event. What's it like? Well, yeah, actually, you know, I grew up around this area. My family's from here, and I consider this my home event. It's terrific. Great roads winding through the mountainsides, uh, along fast ridges, some downhill and uphill hairpins. Difficult conditions. you got to be pretty brave in the mountains, but if you're a good technical driver, you can do very well. I love this rally. The Rocky Mountain Rally, this is the 33rd um, edition of the rally. So it started in 1973, was the first one. And I've uh, been held in basically in Alberta, mostly in Calgary since that time. Uh, various changes in the rallying since then. Uh, now we're all the popular four-wheel drive cars and uh, it's been a Canadian championship event since 1973. It's a very popular event on the calendar because of the mountain area and the very scenic area and very challenging uh, terrain and roads as well. The Rocky Mountain Rally is actually a real fun event. It's, uh, the, the roads are uh, superb. Uh, the roads that we have in Alberta for rallying are, are really good because they're really challenging but they're very smooth. They're not car wrecking roads. There's a lot of competition out here this weekend in Alberta. Antoine Lestage is always fast in his Hyundai Tiburon. Great driver, great car. So then Erickson, now he seems to have the taste to do the whole championship. His daughter has really gotten him reinvested in competing. And we've got Peter Thompson. He's always a real threat and it'll be interesting to see how he does for the rest of the season in that brand new Mitsubishi. Matthew Iorio, this guy's a great competitor from the States. It's the first time we've seen him this season. He's come up to Canada and rented a car from Pat Richard. Interested to see how he'll do. 
I'm sure we can expect to see another solid drive from the former stock car racer Norm LeBlanc and his production Subaru. And I'm looking forward to another spirited drive from Ian Quirar in that 1977 Ford. Just hearing that car flying through the mountainsides is a pleasure. Gord Olson is a local hero who we've seen at just about every event in the country. He's always puts on a great show in that Group 2 Golf GTI. And there's a new thread in the Group 5 class in a 2004 Mitsubishi Lancer modified and turbocharged Zibi Sezik. Guy's becoming a threat. Yeah, and newcomer Neil Wright in a Group 2 1986 RX-7. And veteran Jorga Daskalis in his P3 Toyota Celica. This guy has been competing for a long time. He used to run an Eagle Talon. Now running with his son as a co-driver, I think he's a great competitor and another guy to watch. But I couldn't just sit there and watch all you guys have all the fun. So thanks very much for inviting me into a car this weekend. Oh, it's going to be great for us competing together. A less powerful car than my normal Lancer Evolution, but a great one nonetheless. So why'd you pick number 33? Well, I got no choice. I got to sign number 33 because I entered at the last minute in this two-wheel drive car, which is about half, less than half the power. It's like a third of the power of my normal car. Normally, I'd start third. Now, I'm 33rd. That's cool. We're going to just claw our way up the field. So, I'm really looking forward to seeing some of those guys hitting the road in this race. It's going to be awesome. A lot of talent, a lot of great national guys, a lot of great local guys. I think the rally could go either way. A bunch of the drivers have organized an unofficial test day just outside of Calgary. Andrew, what's the point of this? What are they doing out here today? Well, it's really smart. You show up at a rally, you don't know exactly what the conditions are going to be like, and you haven't driven the car maybe for a few weeks or a few months. So drivers like to get out and do a little practicing, uh, shake down the car, shake down themselves, blow out the cobwebs, and that's what they're using this for. Now, it's hard to find a place to test near where rallies take place and that, that have the same character of the roads that they're going to use. They've done a pretty good job here. Uh, you get a hard-packed dirt surface, and uh, they'll just be using this to get warmed up. And boy, it sure is beautiful, but I see some clouds rolling in. Do you think it's going to stay like this? Weather out here in Calgary is always a challenge. Yeah, you know, they say wait five minutes in the mountains if you don't like the weather. Um, I think that um, today looks great, but uh, we have heard reports that tomorrow could be uh, a little more iffy. So we'll see. The Friday stages uh, for the National Cruise is run on the uh, Powderfish Trail in the Kananaskis area, which is uh, straight west of Calgary. Uh, very mountainous, uh, hilly, lots of exposures and drop-offs on the side of the road. Uh, the roads themselves are quite smooth, uh, loose gravel, very challenging roads. Very difficult run. It's two days. Uh, it's a uh, few roads, but it's very dangerous, very tricky. I have to really concentrate on the road, other way you can crash, especially on the first day on uh, powder face. The event has been running for a lot of years. Uh, the first time I ran it was in 1986. This year we're running a P3 car, which is probably one of the slowest cars I've run. But uh, we're looking to have fun. We think that uh, we should finish first or second place in the, in, the, in the category if everything goes well. This is our third Rocky Mountain Rally, and uh, we really look forward to the Rocky each year. Uh, the, the Mazda RX-7 being a rear-wheel drive car, it really struggles when it's slippery or tight and twisty. And this rally is mostly uh, open and fast, and uh, the RX-7 rear-wheel drive does very well. Definitely Friday, powder face. This is the longest, the most demanding rally road in Canada. And uh, from co-driver's point of view, the scariest. The most important tactic is uh, keep your wheels on the ground and keep going. We expect it to be a, a close battle, both those of us that are fighting to finish at the back as well as uh, up at the front. Oh, how do we get to Rocky? Well, we, uh, we got on an airplane and flew out of the hotel. <laughs> we got some friends, who, uh, some rally guys who uh, were going to be able to compete this year uh, at Rocky but wanted to see what it was all about. So we convinced them to take our car out, which was quite nice, and uh, I got to fly out like a, you know, like the top rally driver I am. The top three drivers in Canada right now are all here. Um, Antoine Lestage, he won the uh, Pierce Neige Rally in Quebec. Peter Thompson, who was last year's Canadian champion and won this rally last year. Sylvain Erickson from Quebec as well, and he's uh, here with his Mitsubishi as well, and uh, he's won the rally uh, two years ago, I think. So uh, the top three are very, very competitive that way. So for round two of the Canadian Rally Championship, the Rocky Mountain Rally, which is sort of hometown for both of us here, 
we decided to do something a little bit different. We're competing in a production three class car. Yeah, my normal car, my Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution, is on its way to an important event in the U.S. So we borrowed from one of my friends a front wheel drive 2004 Mitsubishi Lancer. This is in the production three class, about 110 horsepower, a little heavier than my car. A great chance for us to compete together, and I think actually faster than your normal rally car. Faster than mine, but I think a lot slower than your rally. That's right. Car. But the rally is about to start. We better get suited up and get out there. You ready to race? Let's get racing. Let's go. It's Friday afternoon and the cars are out in Kananaskis country running the first four stages. Nine kilometers, 21 kilometers, 22 kilometers, and nine kilometers. Sylvain Erickson goes out fast out of the hole. He started really well in the early stages. He won the first three, but in stage four, he seems to be dropping off the pace a little bit. 12 seconds behind Lestage. That's enough for Lestage to pull into the overall lead since they've been having a close fight so far. They're really going at each other tooth and nail. One second difference in the first stage, six seconds in the second, three seconds in the third. So then took all those stages, but in the fourth, Antoine claws back all that time. Let's ride along with Antoine Lestage and his co-driver, Mark Williams, for a bit. They left after crest, wash out into right five, no cut. 50 left floor long into right six over small crest here. 30 right three minus down. Deceptive. So Thompson started out well enough, but he, I don't know, he started dropping back a little bit. Either he's not quite comfortable with that car yet, or maybe there's something wrong with it. Could be either. The difficult stages, muddy, and the downhills for the, the third and fourth stages are very difficult, but something could be going off in the car. Matt Iorio gets off to a bit of a slow start, probably just getting used to a rented car. You don't want to bust up somebody else's vehicle, but it doesn't take him long to start moving up the board. Let's check out his technique behind the wheel. This team, they're so enthusiastic. This is the only you don't know. And you know, as this race keeps going, you can tell they're starting to get more comfortable with the car and with each other. And by the fourth stage, only a second separates him and Erickson. Gord Olsen is turning in a solid drive. Not really a threat to drivers like Lestage and Erickson at the front, but he's consistently topping the two-wheel drive classes. And he should. He knows these roads. He's a local. His car is a very well-prepared car, but it is normally aspirated, not turbocharged. And as we go up in altitude to these mountain stages, he's at a relative disadvantage because he doesn't have a turbocharger. Yeah, like Norma Blanc. Now, he had a big crash here last year on stage three, and that must have shaken his confidence about this rally. But so far, he's having a smart, steady drive. He just has to keep it up. Franny Sprongle is also driving a normally aspirated two-wheel drive car, but it's a very small one with a very small engine, a Suzuki Swift. And he was having a great run until stage three, when he seems to have suffered some kind of crash. We're a few minutes behind him on the road, and we came around a corner. There were Suzuki Swift parts all over the road. We don't know all the details yet, but when we come back, I'm going to find Frank and find out exactly what happened. We're at the Rocky Mountain Rally outside of Calgary, Alberta, and everybody's having a solid run until stage three. We came around that corner, and Frank and Dan Sprongle their Suzuki was scattered all across the road. They had a huge roll. They went a little wide on a corner, hit a berm, the car went slightly end over end, and then side over side over side over side. Looks like it rolled about three times, and a big yard sale. There's Suzuki windows here and parts there. They've ripped both rear wheels right off the car. Uh, bad note, that uh, was five left Titans over crest, and on fives we usually don't lift, and it turns out to be as about a four. And we just found out that that's where Antoine rode last year. Uh, we did a triple endo, uh, bad accident, my worst one in 20 years that I had. This was sudden and violent impact. Just one side and then the front and then over again. And you could see the grooves in the road where we dug out. We were doing a little excavating of our own. And it was just one after another. I know my head bounced off the seat a couple of times from side to side. So we were going pretty quick and it just scrubbed off a lot of speed in a hurry. And it wasn't gentle. Now that's a difficult corner. Antoine Lesage went off of that same corner last year, had a huge crash down the hillside, and we ourselves came around that corner and had a big problem. We came around that corner so fast, I could feel that the right side of the car was hanging over a cliff, and I was too busy looking at the vast chasm of nothingness under the wheels on my side of the car to really pay much attention to what had happened to Frank and Dan. Rally fans, 
Bongo name became synonymous with the sport in the 1990s when brothers Frank and Dan held a growling Audi Quattro to string a Canadian and U.S. wins. You could do anything you want at any time on the road you want. You come in late into a corner, just point and score. You want to slide the car, you slide it. Uh, you really didn't have to work with it. It was just ballet on the road. You just play with it. It was just fun driving the car. You never really had to work at it. The two have earned a record six Canadian championships and four North American titles. They retired the Audi in 2001 and for several seasons scaled back their effort to run just selected events in a Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution. But in a change of pace, the Sprongle brothers picked up their first ever factory ride in 2005, a virtually stock Suzuki Swift Plus. It's a front-wheel drive, normally aspirated vehicle. Um, major modifications to the car from the engine department virtually are none. Uh, we are allowed to have upgraded clutch linings and the clutches are free, so we upgraded those in the car. But the engine, gearbox and all out of stock, limited slip, we have an option of putting a limited slip into the vehicle. We don't have enough power to the, utilize a limited slip, so we run an open differential in the vehicle. Um, basically everything underneath the hood is stock. We run a little bit better air, uh, air cleaner, a can and allows a bit more air into the engine. The engine management systems are free. So we run a different engine management system. Basically, all it allows us to do is run a higher rev limit on the engine rev limiter. From 6,500, we have it set at 7,800. The exhaust is pretty well free flow exhaust through a high flow catalytic converter into a race muffler in the back. We can control uh, decibels on it. We have the adjustable canisters inside the car so we can change valving or suspension in between stages very easily. Frank, what's the difference between driving something like this and the Quattro that you're known for? Uh, it's like day and night difference. When you accelerate, it's just road rock, it just accelerates. It's like a dynamite exploding underneath your seats. This is totally different. When you accelerate, you could count. With, uh, your speed accelerating down the road is really slow, but the difference is here you have to perfect your driving technique. With the Quattro, I just learned how to drive it and maximize the power with this. I could probably be quicker with this car now than I'm with the older car in certain areas. In it, they dominate the production two class, earning the class title in their debut season and opening the first round of 2006 Paris Nash with an amazing podium finish. If you're going to go to a rally and just sort of hang out, maybe it's time to take up golf. Just really, if you don't go there to be competitive, you got to find something else to do. Either, and the car's got to be perfect because the five cent piece that lets you down is the most embarrassing thing. If it's something that you go off this drive area, that's fine. But if it's something a hose clamp coming off, a fuel filter being plugged. It's not really acceptable. Frank and Dan work together with their mom and dad at Four Star Motorsports, a well-known rally preparation shop in Georgetown, Ontario. Czech immigrants with a European background in the sport, Frank and Dan's parents have always supported their boys' racing effort. My dad started rallying and then we started rallying after he did several, like 10 years later. And my parents started out with us, they were servicing, they were our service crew and they helped us build the cars and whatever we needed and they supported us that way. They don't go to the rally, they're getting older, they don't come to the rally to move tires around or move fuel around, but they're still here taking care of stuff when we're out playing or rolling cars or what have you. The family are known for their rally expertise. On any given day, the shop is packed with rally cars. Minis for Targa Newfoundland share shop space with client Peter Thompson's two cars and their own competition Suzuki. Recently, family has become more of a priority for the Sprongel team as they usher in the next generation of rally stars. Frank and his wife Alana welcomed baby Barbara last year and Dan and his wife are expecting in December. Even with all their achievements in the sport, these two competitors continue to press for new records. Frank says the team's next goal is an overall win in their P2 Suzuki. They're vastly underpowered and observers say it's so unlikely as to be considered impossible, but don't count them out. If anybody can ever do it, it'll be these two rally veterans. If they don't say I'm crazy, I take it as an insult. Rally Tech, brought to you by Subaru. Think, feel, drive. Suspension is a critical part of every rally driver's inventory. Without rally suspension, you're not going to be able to land the big jumps. And you're not going to be able to go flat out over all the rough roads we drive on. If you take a look at a rally shock, first of all, you'll notice that it's very thick compared to a standard shock. The thickness of the rally shock is about 50 millimeters. A standard shock which you can see if I lift up the boot, is only about 15 to 25 millimeters. What that means is this thick shock can take the bending and absorbing loads and big impacts that you'll hit on the stages. The other key part of rally suspension are the springs. If you look at this spring, we've got over 12 coils on this spring, whereas a standard shock has only got four coils. These rally springs are much, much stiffer, and they allow the car to absorb all the landings that we're going to take on the rally cars. The other big difference is the threaded spring perch. This allows you to adjust the ride heights down or up depending on whether you want the car lowered for pavement or raised for really rough roads. 
The final part about these rally shocks is they've got an adjustable knob on the bottom. That allows you to adjust the bump and the rebound so you can tune the car's handling to suit the driver's liking. That allows the rally drivers to extract the most performance out of the cars that you'd never be able to do with standard shocks. Rally Tech, brought to you by Subaru. Think, feel, drive. And on stage four of the Rocky Mountain Rally, Martin Donnelly also had some trouble. He went wide on a corner, a right-hand corner, slid into the ditch, and it looks like he's bent his control arm. Might be some other damage on the car. He's gotten that car back to service, and his crew will work on it to try to repair it to see if he can re-enter the rally. Well, we just came over the crest and just got a little bit off the line, and the car gripped the side of the road and pulled us into the rocks, and there we remained until Sweep pulled us out. So how much work is that for you tonight? We're done. We're finished. Yeah, we're finished after service, so we're done. <laughs> Excellent. So, how's the car going to be tomorrow compared to the way it was today? Same as you. Excellent. Same so that's, you. I guess that's why they get the pros involved, huh? You're just about done. Who are the pros? <laughs> so here's Matt Iorio. He is the defending North American champion. He's driving a rented car. He's got his car back in the East for a big race in the States next weekend. How's the car handling for you? This car? This one's handling fine. Yeah, it's pretty much the same beast that I'm used to. And how are you finding the stages? We had a moment on the third stage, almost went off. How about you? I had... <laughs> A, a bit of corrective driving. We were coming to a series of super fast fives and sixes, and uh, there was a crest, and then you probably saw it right at the end. It's a crest, and then a right four. Right four got really slippy, and uh, Oli was. We were moving probably a little bit faster than Oli expected. He didn't tell me about that four until we were on the crest. So I looked around and decided it's either the bank on the outside or cut the ditch on the inside. So we cut deep and pulled up apparently boulders about this size. Uh, sheared our uh, caster block. Um, yeah, popped the tire, the whole work, but you know, kept it on the road. So the last two stages have been cancelled due to the bad weather. It's been crazy and muddy out here, so Friday's stages will be shorter than expected. Yeah, we got back from the mountains to the motorcycle park in Calgary. Uh, the super specials, 1.5 kilometers each, and the organizers took the decision I think they had to take. It's just mud soup out there, and it would have been a total disaster if we tried to run it. I can barely stand at the top of the hill. So, two stages gone, spectators disappointed for sure, but now everyone's getting ready for tomorrow. And the other big news is, after all that frantic work in the service area, Martin Donnelly was too late getting into service and he's been time barred. Yeah, just a little off, but a big frustration for Martin Donnelly out of the rally. So, at the end of the first day's rally here at the Rocky Mountain Rally, we have Antoine Lestage in the lead by two seconds ahead of Sylvain Erickson. Yeah, Erickson went out and won the first three stages very well, but they were by narrow margins. And the 12 seconds that Lestage made up on the fourth stage was enough for him to haul back and he's holding the rally going into Saturday. Matt Ayoyo is sitting confidently in third place, more than a minute behind the leader, and last year's champion Peter Thompson is two minutes or so off the pace in fourth. Norman Blanc is only 21 seconds off Peter Thompson, and local hero Gord Olsen in that VW Golf is rounding out the top five with a great drive, three minutes and 55 seconds off the lead. It's shaping up into a tough event, so join us next time for the conclusion of the Rocky Mountain Rally. While in Calgary, the crew updated the Blackfoot Inn, featuring outstanding facilities, quality service, and convenient amenities. Visit them online at www.blackfootinn.com. Alright, let's see, we're gonna ask you a couple questions. We're not gonna do this with this, right? Oh, yes, we are! We're gonna do it with this, right?